we go on. But you ready to get started? Yep, let's go. Awesome. So give a quick intro. Uh, hello, everybody, and welcome to Get to Know George Masonry's AI System, presented by Dan Camus from the MCAA. Right now, everybody is in listen-only mode, so if you have any questions, feel free to type them into the chat, or you can raise your hand, and at the end, we'll have time for questions. So without further ado, I will thank you all for being here and introduce you to your presenter, Dan Camus. Take it away, Dan. Hi, everybody. Uh, thank you for joining us today. It's good to see we have another uh, a good group with us here. Uh, I am uh, here to finally take the lid off off a little secret we've been working on for about two years called George. Uh, George is the MCAA's proprietary AI system designed to support the industry. So um, there's there's really uh, two people involved. I, I like to joke I get to take all the uh, the presentation of this, but Jason is our director of technology. Uh, he's just down the hall from me, so uh, nothing will go wrong. But if anything were to have a hiccup, I could run and go get him. And then I am Dan. I'm the director of content at the MCAA. So we've we've worked together on this system, George. Uh, it's actually almost three years now. And uh, we saw that AI was coming and immediately wanted to develop a solution for the masonry industry to really be... I believe we're the first out to the market with a solution. And the reason we've done so is because I'm sure you've seen AI slapped on the end of everything. And, and what it's really doing is putting something simple and not trained onto something by a company in a way that allows them to charge a lot of money for something that doesn't work or doesn't have reliable information. So I like to start my Get to Know George presentations, and this is our third. Our first was at our mid-year meeting in Utah. Our second was at the beginning of October, and now this is our first for November. By saying, don't be fooled. There are a lot of things that are going to call themselves AI, or in particular, say that they're a solution for AI within the masonry industry when it's just not true. Um, so don't be fooled. So a lot of what we've worked on over the past three years is understanding what the difference is between purpose-built AI and generic AI. And I kind of call it good and bad AI. So I like to use the analogy of phishing. Um, so bad AI or generic AI is a bad net that catches everything. I'm sure some of you in in the uh, audience may have used chat GPT for something that didn't do quite what you expected, uh, meaning that you caught some jellyfish or an octopus or a stingray, not really what you were looking for. Good AI is like having a, a, a good fishing net. So you're only looking for blue fish, having a purpose-built, well-constructed artificial intelligence um, we'll catch those correct fish for you. But that's not all. Uh, there are specific parameters that go into the creation of each purpose-built assistant. So there's a few things we'll talk about today. The first are the assistants. So these are the purpose-built artificial intelligence tools. And then we'll get into how users can access them. And that's the George part of it. So for each assistant, um, that again is designed to be an artificial intelligence that helps with a specific task, there are really three criteria that we at the MCAA work on. Um, the first is actually not on the slide. It's the, the employee handbook or the coaching materials for each of those assistants. We'll see some of them in action, but um, a few of them can have upwards of 10,000 word instructions. You can upload about two gigabytes worth of files to them as well. So having that employee handbook, having those guardrails for each assistant for what they're allowed to do and what their purpose is really is foundational. Then from there, there's two numerical values that we calibrate for each assistant. And they're at the front end and the tail end of the AI giving you an answer. So the first is top P, and to go back to my fishing analogy, this is the spot where you place the net, so the spot where you fish. Um, this is a numerical value that the lower it gets, the less, the more likely answers are considered. So it eliminates the answers with less likelihood. So it is a tighter net, so to speak. On the tail end of it, 
is the temperature. So this is the creativity in the output of the message. So once it analyzes what is a likely answer for what you're looking for, it then has uh, creativity limitations for how it presents it to you. In the case of some of the examples that we'll demonstrate later when we do the live demonstration of George, um, those are mathematical values. Those are formulaic. So those creativity numbers are very low. The coaching instructions have very clear indications to the assistant that, hey, this is a matter of safety. This is people's lives. You can't get this wrong. There really only is one, one correct answer because it's mathematical. So uh, it's a combination of uh, employee training, so to speak, and then creativity values that are put on the front end and the back end of that AI giving you an answer. Now, I sound like I know a lot about AI, and the truth is I do after almost three years, but I didn't three years ago. So what Jason asked me to do um, when I started working on this was to create my own assistant. And if you've sat in on any of the previous Get to Know Georges, you've probably seen Gomez. So Gomez is my assistant that I joke I never knew I needed, but now he is a, a very good support for me. Um, by creating an assistant for myself, it really allowed me to understand um, those values I just talked about, the employee handbook, the, the calibration values as well. So in the case of Gomez, I built him to support me in a lot of what I do. So he has every single email I've ever sent. Um, we're able to export that and load that into his coaching material so that he can write an email in my style. I would say this is 95% accurate. Um, we'll see in the live demonstration, I'll ask him to talk about how I email so he can analyze trends over time that gets into a bit of the data analysis. He can uh, understand my handwriting and type that out. So uh, I'm actually looking at a few of our whiteboards in the conference room here. I can take a picture of that on my phone, throw it into Gomez. He can type that out and organize my notes for me. He can edit using the AP style guide. So this is something that allowed me to understand how uh, the assistants we create could use reference documents. So he's able to look at a very large reference document and apply specific changes um, within the content that is uploaded to him. He created his own image. I, I do like to joke that any resemblance to a younger, more handsome version of me is purely coincidental. Um, and he helps me uh, structure things I talk about. So this outline for this presentation is something that he helped, uh, helped me work on. Um, by doing that, it allowed me and our team to really understand how we could apply purpose-built artificial intelligence to the masonry industry. So this is a list of assistants that we are working on actively. And while you look at this screen for just a minute or two, um, I won't read it to you, but I will let you know that right now we are in an open beta. And what that means is that George and all the assistants that we release are free for anybody and everybody to use. And the reason we're doing that is because it is our role to develop a tool that is going to be applicable to the industry. Right now, there are three that are publicly available. We anticipate our open beta is going to last for about a year. Um, so through almost all of 2025, at the earliest would be when it ends. And uh, we anticipate at least 30 assistants will be released within the system right now. So most of these that you see on the screen on this slide um, will be within George. Um, one thing I will say is next week we are doing what we're calling George 2.1. Uh, the 2.1 release will have a variety of feature updates, but in addition, there'll be five more assistants released. So we'll be up to eight um, within George within our first, uh, really our first month. So we are moving faster than we thought, but then again, AI in general is moving faster than we thought. So it's, it's not totally surprising. So these are all purpose-built assistants that we will eventually have within George. That talks about the assistant side. And one thing I'd like to stress before we move on is that AI is human-like. So the way to get good answers out of AI is to talk to it like you would talk to a, a junior level person on your team. Um, don't just put in generic questions like you would into Google. Um, it's designed to help you with more than that. And because it's purpose built, it's much more intentional and correct than things like ChatGPT are. 
Um, we have been improving with the way we've structured George and the assistants. Our AI has been improving every day for the past three years since we've been working on it. And now, since we have a few thousand users in the open beta, we're able to take that data and make continuous improvements to it. I do think AI is going to change the masonry industry, not necessarily in the way that people in the media might make you think. I don't think AI is something to be afraid of. AI is going to be the next evolution of tools that we use to make ourselves better. So view it as a tool that you talk to like a human. Um, I don't think we'll be anywhere near blindly trusting AI for at least a decade. So certainly while we're in open beta with George, we advise and and strongly, strongly recommend that you have a human look over those outputs. If you find an issue, let us know or something was not quite correct that it it told us. We've had some great feedback so far and made some improvements. Um, so it's it, we don't think it's anywhere near replacing anybody's jobs. Uh, we don't think it ever will be. It is a tool, uh, a tool that should be looked over by humans. But I do think it's going to drastically increase our productivity and efficiency and our ability at the MCAA to support the masonry industry, which is our primary goal. So those are the assistants. Now, um, I'm sure you're wondering how those are packaged. And the solution, uh, which I'm, I'm a big fan of, is called George. So this is the umbrella where all those purpose-built assistants will live. And when we started working on this three years ago, we had three parameters that we worked within, that it needed to be familiar, so there was not really a learning curve for it. It needed to be simple, so you didn't really need to install anything. You didn't need to have the highest end gaming computer to use it, and it would be seamless. So anything that would make the user's life more difficult um, would be stripped out of it. And so our solution is George, which we'll see in a minute, we're calling it Masonry's AI workspace on any device. And when I say any device, I mean the only requirements are that you have a web browser and a data connection of some sort, so Wi-Fi or cellular. You could have a 10-year-old iPad with Safari on it, and it will run George. It's all web-based. It syncs uh, across all your devices. It's tied to your MCAA account. You can start a conversation by talking to it in the field pick it up back at your desk, upload reference files. It is designed to have ultimate portability. So there's no apps to install. There is no fancy computer that you need. Um, you can talk to it, you can type to it, whatever is most convenient for you. And I'll show you in a little, just a few minutes here, what we're gonna do. So we're gonna show you uh, four assistants today. You'll actually get to very briefly meet Gomez and um, I'll talk to him and have him tell you a little bit about what we work on together. One that I'm very excited about, excited about is our industry specific Spanish translations assistant. Um, that assistant actually uh, next week will be able to live translate into somebody's earbud within a few second delay, real-time masonry Spanish. So this is not Google Translate, which can do a terrible job a lot of times. This is coached on all of the Spanish translations we've ever published. So industry accepted masonry Spanish is what this is coached on. And within a few seconds, you can immediately close that language gap on a job site. We are actually debuting this with our popular form and development course at the World of Concrete. So um, it is the first time we will offer that in Spanish through George um, for free for anybody who signs up for that course. Um, so that's very exciting. Our wall bracing assistant will be the third we demonstrate and our fourth will be our productivity study. And I'll go in a little bit into more detail when we get there. So what I'm gonna do now is flip over to George. Um, so Justin, can you hop on real quick and confirm that you're seeing my screen? Yes, I can see your screen. Okay. Perfect. So everybody, what we're looking at right now is my personal George screen. So this looks exactly what you'd think of when I say an operating system. So it's designed to mimic an operating system. As you can see, it's running in a browser. So this is a browser window. Um, I'll go ahead and maximize for this. 
Um, I can drag around my personal note. I have a note to myself to remind you that everybody's home screen is customized. Because this is tied to the MCAA database, um, everybody at your company will have a custom home screen. That will become more important as we roll out more assistance and more features. One of the more exciting features I'm looking forward to next week for 2.1 will be that we will have the ability for there to be multiple people within a thread. So you can essentially make what are group chats for your company based off of projects or threads or conversations. So when you log into the MCAA database, on the left panel, you'll see a big red button that says George AI. You'll click that and your personal home screen will open up. And like I said, this works like what you would think it, it does, familiar with a if you're familiar with an operating system, which I'm sure you all are since you're here, um, you can change all your settings. Uh, you can save your desktop layout for every time you log in. Um, eventually, this will be able to deploy emails and messages for you. So you'll sign in with your uh, 365 or Gmail account, and you will work with your assistant to draft an email that you'd like to send, and it'll actually send it with your approval through your email platform. So um, again, it was designed to be familiar and simple. So what you do when you get here is you'll either click assistant or you will um, open one specifically on the desktop. So this assistant that we're in right now, and you'll see more here because um, we have a ton of internal assistants we use here at the MCAA. Um, but when you log in and you click assistance, you'll see the ones that you have access to. Um, this is familiar. Um, this looks like a, an, an Android or an iMessage that you're familiar with on your phone or your computer. So the first assistant I'll show you is Gomez, who's the one we've, uh, we've talked a little bit about earlier. And I'm going to turn my voice on. Um, so what I'm going to say is... Hey, Gomez, can you tell the audience who's watching a presentation about you a little bit about what we work on together and what you can help me with? Um, interesting. Let me see. Hey there, folks. I'm Gomez, and I'm here to make Dan Cam's life a little easier and a lot more fun. Together, we work on a variety of tasks at the Mason Contractors Association of America, MCAA, where Dan is the director of content. My role is to assist Dan with everything from organizing content and managing communications to transcribing his sometimes cryptic handwriting. You know, the usual assistant stuff, but with a bit of flair. Dan and I collaborate on creating engaging content for MCAA's publications and media channels ensuring that the information we provide is top-notch for Mason contractors and industry professionals. We also work on developing strategies for advertising and sponsorships, helping to keep the MCAA... So you can interrupt the assistance at any point. Like I said, you don't have to use the voice. Uh, for us and for the research we did developing, George, this was something that was important for the industry was to be able to click a button on their phone, talk to it, and have that conversation go in a two-way direction. One of the things that's important to note, and we'll see this a little later, is that the conversations with our assistants are designed to be two-way conversations. So if they don't have all the information that is needed to answer your question, they'll tell you that. Chat GPT and those kind of sizzle solutions that are just designed to really kind of get people excited about AI. They try and solve your question too quickly, which in some cases related to the masonry industry can give you a wrong answer, which leads to safety issues. Um, we wanted to make sure not to do that. So Gomez is, is not one of those assistants, but he will let me know if I haven't given him everything that he needs. But like I said, he has been trained on every email I've ever sent. So let's have him talk about how I email and then we'll have him draft one for me. Gomez, can you very shortly describe my email style to the audience, please? Hmm. Um, interesting, let me see. Dan Kamis' email style is personable and conversational, often reflecting a friendly and approachable tone. He tends to be direct and clear, ensuring that the message is easily understood. 
Dan's emails often include a touch of humor or personal anecdotes, making them relatable and engaging. He is also attentive to detail, ensure. So this is, again, this is an example of um, the AI taking a lot of information. So I think in my case, it was about 13,000 emails that I've sent since I've been here. Very quickly can analyze the trends over time. So I've actually asked him before, I said, how has my email changed since I've been here? And he's able to do that. The important thing to stress is that we will be rolling out, we think before World of Concrete, we will be rolling out the ability for our users and our beta testers to create their own personal assistant. So as you can see a little bit with Gomez, he does have some sarcasm uh, talking about my cryptic handwriting. Um, we have a questionnaire um, for everybody who creates their own personal assistant. I like my assistants to have some personality. Some of our staff doesn't. So there are some drier assistants there. Um, but that will be a process our users go through, linking their emails, being able to understand the email style in order to send some. So let's have him draft one for me. So, uh, Justin, if you're there, I'm going to pretend that we have somebody late for our podcast. By the way, small plug for the Masonry Strong podcast, if you haven't tuned in. We're on our third week of it premiering, and it's doing really well. So uh, make sure you tune in on Spotify, uh, Apple Podcasts, or our YouTube channel. So, Gomez, we have Tom Vakela for the Masonry Strong podcast is running late. He was scheduled for 1030. I need to email Justin and let him know that he needs to move on with the schedule as planned and will slot Tom in when possible. Um, interesting. Let me see. Here's a draft for your email to Justin. Subject, schedule update for Masonry Strong Podcast. Hi, Justin. I hope you're doing well. I so we won't have Gomez read it. But the, the important thing to note is you, you should feel free as you work within George and those assistants to interrupt, say that's not what you were looking for. Again, talk to it like a human, but it is not a human, and you get the best output. So I could, I could for example, say, Gomez give more detail in this email and he would, or you're not being specific enough. Um, and you can do that. But again, this is an email and I can tell you honestly, that is pretty much exactly how I would draft that email to Justin. Um, and, and we will have that functionality for our users very shortly. The way this will work when that update comes out is that you will have the ability to click a button that says that It'll ask you, do you want to send this email? You'll click yes, and it'll deploy that for you. So you'll actually be able to draft and deploy emails from within George very shortly. So that's Gomez and the personal assistant side. I think that's an important thing to show just because of the general nature that some of our assistants will be able to help with in the future. Um, the next one let's show, let's talk about the industry specific Spanish translation. So this is something that's very important to me. I'm looking forward to see the immediate impact this is going to have on the industry. This takes almost 10 years since I've been here. This takes almost 10 years worth of translations from our professional translators. Um, it breaks down their communication style, their translation style. Uh, there's a lot of reference documents in it to preferred ways of translating. And uh, it immediately will translate whatever you need. For a member of ours, I recently translated about a 100-page document, and that took, that took a while, uh, two hours, uh, which is a lot for AI. But if you think about how long that would have taken a translator to do, um, it's much more efficient. Uh, we've, we've demoed this live. We're, we're using this at our Foreman Development course in Las Vegas at the World of Concrete. We have a lot of our contractors um, using this already. Uh, so we're very excited about the future of this. But let me do a demo. Let's pretend I have to do a heat awareness advisory for a crew out in the field and a portion of them are Spanish speaking. Hey everybody, it's Dan. I just want to remind you that temperatures are going to be over 85 degrees today, which means our heat emphasis policy is in effect. Make sure to stay hydrated, uh, get some rest every hour, and stay in the shade when you're on break. Please reach out with any questions and take care out there. Hmm. Let's see here. Hola a todos, soy Dan. Solo quiero recordarles que las temperaturas estarán por encima de los 85 grados hoy. 
lo que significa que nuestra política de énfasis en el calor está en efecto. Asegúrense de mantenerse hidratados, descansar cada hora y permanecer a la sombra durante sus descansos. Por favor, no duden en comunicarse si tienen alguna pregunta y cuídense mucho. So this will um, be able to be deployed to entire teams next week. We'll have the group chats in place. So everybody on specific jobs can see those, uh, those messages, whether they're in English or in Spanish. Um, there's two ways to really use this assistant. So this is what we call the transactional Spanish. So I say something in, it gives me the Spanish. You can then copy and, and paste it out, eventually email it if you need to, or text it out, however, however you'll need to deploy that. The more exciting uh, part will be the live Spanish translations. And I think I said this before, but the best way to think of them is like having a United Nations translator in your pocket. So if somebody is within this thread and I'm talking right now and they have an AirPod in our, and are within the same thread, they will be hearing within a few second delay exactly what I'm saying in Spanish, masonry Spanish in, in nearly real time. That That's going to be a game changer for the industry where we know the language barrier is something that prevents people from making their way through the industry. Um, we are in the process of regularly translating every piece of content the MCAA and Masonry Magazine put out right now. Um, into Spanish. And this is going to be something that we do regularly using this assistant. Um, this was something that was not possible before. Uh, the barriers of entry were cost and time. And AI, again, approaching this solution with AI being a tool, um, really allows us to close that gap almost immediately and, and overnight. So this will be an opportunity on both sides, the transactional Spanish and then that live real-time Spanish through the AirPod um, that, that people can use within the system. So transactional is live right now in the version if you went to the George website, um, but the, the UN style translations that will be pushed, we think just after the election next week, that will be pushed out. So. If you're signed up for our, our email list, you will be getting notifications as those come out. I do have fun with those because I do enjoy working on the AI. So those come for me, um, and those give you some tips and tricks of, of how to use George and work with George. Um, the next two assistants, which we're moving into, these deal with more mathematical uh, formulas. Uh, what's very interesting for me is the ability to turn large documents into things that are immediately usable for the industry. So the first that we'll show you is based on a little book you're probably familiar with. It's an 80 page document called the standard practice for wall bracing masonry walls under construction. I think that's the name of it. It's very long. Um, it's a, it's a book we've developed about bracing masonry walls. And what we've done is we've created an assistant that will, uh, in real time, give you what you need to know for properly bracing a masonry wall. The important thing to note with this one is that it will not give you the calculations you're looking for or answer a question until it has everything it needs. So let me show you what I mean with this. Hi, I'm bracing a wall. Can you tell me what I need to do, please? Okay, got it. Let's see. Certainly. To provide you with accurate guidance on bracing your masonry wall, I'll need some specific information about your project. Please provide the following details. 1. Type of wall. Is it a reinforced or unreinforced wall? 2. Materials used. What type of masonry materials are you using, e.g. brick, block, stone? 3. Wall dimensions. What are the height and length of the wall? 4. Rebar and grouting. If it's a reinforced wall, what type of rebar and grouting are you using? 5. Soil type. What type of soil is the wall being constructed on? 6. Wind speed. What is the expected wind speed in the area? So as you can see, it's not going to just say, okay, here's what we need to do. So let's give it the answers. 
It's a fully reinforced wall. It's fully grouted with number five rebar, 32 inches on center. It's CMU. It's 100 feet long and 32 feet high. Uh, it's a clay soil, and wind speeds are expected to be under 20 miles an hour. Okay, I'm on it. Thank you for providing the details. Let's proceed with calculating the necessary bracing for your fully reinforced CMU wall. Here's a summary of the inf So I'm going to turn off the voice for a minute while it finishes running. So as you can see, it gives you all the data. It gives you the formulas. We'll have some improvements in the next update with how it presents the formulas. But you can interrupt at any point. So let's pretend it started to say that. You can just say... I need my brace height, brace run, and brace length. I don't need those formulas. Um, interesting. Let me see. Certainly. Based on the information provided. So again, this is what I'd like to stress as you start working within George, which we hope you do. Um, talk to it like a human. Say you're giving me way too much information. That's too much or if it doesn't give you enough, say, hey, I really need to see those formulas. I want my structural engineer to review them. Um, again, we are not advising anybody to use George's assistance um, without review. Certainly while we're in the open beta, I don't know that we'll ever say that you can blindly trust them. But this takes an 80-page document and immediately makes it usable for somebody out in the field. And you don't you don't need to have the book memorized to make it immediately usable. Um, you can, if you don't give it all the information, so for example, if I had left one of those criteria out, which I kind of did at the beginning because I didn't tell it anything and it said what I needed to do, um, it will ask you follow-up questions. It will get to the bottom of what it needs to know in order to properly answer the question. Like I said, these are assistants that are um, very mathematical. So their creativity values that I talked about earlier are, are much, much lower. There, there's really only one right answer for this. So they will, uh, they will only spit out the answer in the correct way. So we go from wall bracing to, uh, our productivity study, which will be our last demo for today. Uh, our productivity study, I like to joke is a 300-page PhD thesis that's almost as old as I am that has sat on a shelf collecting dust for a very long time. What this was was the work of a PhD student to understand impacts on productivity within the masonry industry, specific to things like job site congestion, uh, material shortages, things like that. Uh, nobody looked at it before we put it in AI, but when we've created an assistant out of it, it immediately lets you look at um, how your job and your bottom line are being impacted by things on a job site. I probably cannot explain this as well as the assistant can explain it, so I'll ask uh, it to help us out. Hi there. I'm doing a demo of all our assistants within George. Can you please... Uh, explain to me the specific types of productivity impacts you can help us better understand on a job. Okay, got it. Let's see. In masonry construction, productivity impacts are primarily due to field disruptions. The study identifies 16 key factors that significantly affect productivity. These include 1. Congestion, limited working space and material storage due to overcrow, ding or stacking of trades. 2. Morale and attitude, changes involving excessive inspection, multiple change orders and poor site conditions. 3. Labor reassignment, rescheduling or expediting demands that result in lost time. For crew size change, inefficiency or workflow disruption due to changes in crew size. Five, added operations, disruptions from concurrent operations. Six, diverted supervision, supervision distraction due to analyzing and planning changed work. Seven, learning curve, time lost as workers adjust to new work or environments. Eight, errors and omissions, 
time lost due to mistakes from changed circumstances. 9. Beneficial occupancy, restricted work access due to owner use of premises before completion for one source. These disruptions can lead to significant productivity losses, which are quantified in terms of lost work hours per unit of work area. The study... So what's interesting, and this is part of, um, you know, when tech kind of hands off the assistance to the content side, um, part of what we try and figure out is how these assistants will work. So in the example of the wall bracing, it won't start to give you an answer until it has everything it needs. Productivity is a little bit different. Uh, productivity could be that a contractor just wants to understand at a high level what happens. As a user, you can then choose to supplement that with more information to get to the number more accurately. So if you have bids or schedules or things like that, you can upload it. But as you'll see in a minute, it will give you an approximate number that you can then narrow down to. In the case of wall bracing, it's not going to really give you anything until it has all the information that it needs. So... Um, to give you two use cases of this, I, I think it was within the first week of the beta being opened uh, almost a month ago, uh, we had one contractor who had uh, another trade dig a big hole in front of a scaffold to access the masonry part of the job, and it was there for four days. And he used the productivity assistant to say, okay, what's my loss for this happening? Um, it gave him the number. He sent that to the GC, and I would be surprised if if that hole wasn't repaired in very quick fashion once he threatened to start charging him that amount. Because he could say, this is based on the data from a 300-page PhD-level thesis. Prior to George, prior to the AI assistance coming out, that study was only useful if somebody read through it and could apply that to it. You don't have to be a PhD to use this study any longer because of it being within George and as an assistant. In a second case, this actually happened at mid-year during our demo, one of our committee chairs had a job that had 168 inspections out of, I, I think it was 220 working days, the job. And uh, I said, well, let's not give it the answer. He, he knew approximately how much he lost on the job. And the productivity study was in within 1% of, of his number. I think he estimated 30. The productivity study estimated 29%. I think he lost uh, around a half million dollars on that job. So he always uh, said, it, boy, it would have been nice to have this assistant going into it knowing how, many, how much money I lost with those inspections and could do something about it. So this, this is a very powerful tool. So let's show you how it can be used in the field. Um, my brick for a job is delayed by two weeks, and it's about a four-week job. It's only five of the ten pallets I'm expecting. What is that going to do to my productivity? Hmm. Let's see here. The delay in receiving five out of ten pallets of brick for a four-week job can significantly impact your productivity. This situation falls under the category of material availability disruptions. Such disruptions can lead to, one, idle time, workers. So this is a case where I'm going to have it get to the point more quickly. Just give me an approximate calculation. Okay, I'm on it. To estimate the productivity impact of a two-week delay in receiving half of your brick supply for a four-week job, we can use the model provided in the study. I won't have it read to us this whole thing, but you you can see this is an example where it didn't do quite what I wanted it to do, but I could force it to give me the answer, again, based off of the formula within the study pretty quickly and pretty effectively. Now, it's giving us the formula, and I am nowhere near a PhD, and I don't like math to begin with, but it levels the playing field for everybody immediately, and um, it'll cite the sources. Um it, it you can refer to that in your communications in the field that this is based off of a PhD level study that uh, assesses the impact of productivity. You can, um, like I said, you can upload reference documents to make this more accurate. But our emphasis for this one was to give you an approximate number that you could get more specific with. So again, it's viewing each assistant 
and how the user is going to work with them and and how accurate they need to be from the outset. Those are all things that we factor into those calibrations for each assistant. Um, one thing Jeff, our CEO, likes to mention is how many studies are sitting on a shelf like this that are still valuable information that nobody has looked at for two decades. We're currently working with uh, many of the major industry, uh, industry groups uh, to make the whole industry more efficient through the use of George. So we're we're in talks with several of them to work on tech notes and and test things within there. But we think the the productivity impacts of this are are tremendous. And um, we look forward to seeing the the impacts uh, on the industry. So um, I think that is a pretty good uh, quick overview of George. One thing to stress again is that you need to have an MCA account to use George. Uh, there is no charge while we're within open beta at the at the moment. Excuse me. Um, you just log in. On the left, you'll see a George AI button. You'll access your own personal home screen. We advise everybody, please sign everybody in your company up for George. And an MCAA account, doesn't matter if you're a member or a non-member, we really want to make a very effective tool for the industry that is going to be the workspace of the future. So with that, I, I say thank you. And Justin, I we might have some questions. I wasn't really looking, but I'm going to be quiet for a minute. Yeah, of course. So now's the time. If you have any questions, feel free to type it into the chat and uh, we will get those uh, questions answered for you. And it does seem like we have one. So this one question, I guess it's more of a two-part question, and it says, will this eventually be a part of the MCA membership, and will there be a charge for it? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, our intent with George is to make a tool that is going to support the industry as an evolution of our of our role within the industry. To do that and charge an exorbitant amount of money would be counterintuitive to everything George Miller, who helped start us, and the the assistant and system are named for, would be very backwards. So the answer is yes, we are going to move to kind of a software as a service model for MCAA membership. Um, but the answer is, will it be dramatically different from current dues? And the answer is no. So we don't envision a major change to our due structure with George uh, leaving open beta. So this will only happen once we leave the beta and this becomes George, uh, not beta George. Uh, so uh, the answer is yes, it will fold into membership um, and it will not be drastically different from the dues that we charge right now. I would say within 20%, either up or down uh, would be the most you'd see. And truthfully, all that's designed to do is offset costs. It's This is not a moneymaker for us. This is designed to give reliable information and tools to the industry. So, you know, if it's a larger company, uh, you know, you have those assistants that make your team more efficient. If it's a smaller company, it can help fill some of the roles that you maybe can't hire yet. So, uh, Justin, that was a very long way for me to answer it. But was that both parts? Yeah. Yeah, it was just a two-part right there. Um, as of right now, that looks like to be the only question we've had. Um, I'll, I'll open this up for anyone that wants to raise their hand or, like I said, type their question into chat. Okay. Um, if you think of any questions later that you just – oh, Todd Daly. I'll allow you to talk. Todd, you should be good to talk. You are muted right now. Hi, can you? There you go, Todd. Hello. Hi. Yeah, we can hear you. He's office manager. Um, I don't know if there's the reason why there's not much questions, but my chat is disabled, so I wasn't able to write a question in there. Really? Um, Justin, thanks for letting me know. Do? You're welcome. No, I appreciate you raising your hand. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Let's see. Let's see if I can figure it out. It says it's to everybody. It says it's open to everybody. Um, well, there well, might be a, a Zoom thing. I think has, the, yeah, if anybody has questions, you can. Yeah, 
feel free. If anyone to has questions, I, I also put Dan's email in the chat. Um, but everyone knows Dan's email is dcamus at masoncontractors.org. If you have questions, uh, feel free to email him. He is the go-to for it. Um, sure. But thank yeah. you for bringing yeah, that up. Hold on. I have to do yeah. another plug, Justin. Sorry. Yeah, you're good. Uh, we, are, uh, we, we are anticipating, uh, we've been asked by several of our large partners, Cornerstone Partners, and several of our members to do uh, demos at World of Concrete. So we will at the very least be probably in Hydromobile's area and EZG's area during World of Concrete. There will be specific assistance for them that they would like to demo. There is a full push from our partners to accelerate this and our and our leadership to do this a lot faster than we thought we originally had to. So um, we, we will be at World of Concrete, we're still trying to figure out what that looks like for George, but it's only because this has accelerated a lot more than we thought. But we look forward to um, seeing you all there. We look forward to you using George. We hope you start using George. Like I said, five more assistants and a bunch of features are rolling out next week. We anticipate three-week rollout schedules for updates and features, so it'll it'll get moving quickly. But But I appreciate your time, and Justin, I'm sorry I cut you off. No, you're good. Um, as of right now, it looks like no one else was raising their hand, but like I said, if any of you think of any questions later, feel free to email Dan, um, with those questions and he'd be happy to help you out with those. Um, so I guess, again, I just want to thank everyone for attending today's session, Dan, thank you for presenting. Um, I know you love to do it. Uh, and, uh, yeah, so keep on the lookout for any upcoming webinars on our mcaa.org uh, website. Um, and thank you all for being here and, uh, everyone else have a great day. Thank you, everybody. All right.